Once, long ago, this land was inhabited by the animals and by my people. Now the land is crossed by highways and many of the animals are gone. Once, all this land was ours. Green plains, rolling hills and craggy mountains. Blue rivers and fertile valleys. Now my people live on only a small part of the land, scattered bits of earth across the country, from east to west. Though some of us still live on our land, many have left to live and work in the cities. We are Native Americans. We were here for perhaps 20,000 years before your people came from Europe, Asia, and Africa. You sometimes call us Indians, as if we were all one nationality, but we are not. We are many different communities, many different nations and tribes. To show you how different we are, I'll take you to three parts of the United States. I'll introduce you to three Native Americans who will tell you about their peoples long ago and today. First, come with me to California. Listen while a young member of the Shoshone Paiute people tells us about the Shoshone Paiute. We call ourselves Numa, the people of the Owens Valley. Ever since I was young, I've heard stories about what life used to be like in the mountain forest where we live. In one particular story, the mountain streams run over their banks. There is great flooding. The animals who represent the people of our tribe dive for the bottom, hoping to find earth. But they fail. It seems as though the flood will never end. And then a brave bird dies very deep. He disappears. Perhaps he has died. But no, he returns with earth in his beak. Soon the flood ends and the land is dry again. The legend suggests something about how my people live near mountain streams. During spring runoffs, the streams can be dangerous. You see, our home is a reservation in the Owens Valley, a land of our own inside the United States of America and the state of California. There aren't many Numa people, only about a thousand of us. This is the land we've always lived on. The pine trees are still here, the pinyon trees. In the old days, the nuts that grew in the cones supplied a lot of our food. We stored them to eat during the long winter. We would mix them with charcoal and cook them while we tossed them in a basket. Then we would shell them and roast them again. We would grind them into flour with a tool called a paha or a mata and tusu. We would make a kind of heavy mush that we ate with wild game. We still collect the pinyon nuts. The pine forest is still here. Some deer and rabbits are left, but the antelope are gone. Once, every family had its own place in the forest for harvesting pine nuts, and its own place for hunting. And the river belonged to everyone. We fished where we wanted and we still do today, though not many of us still can use the old method, snatching fish out of the water. We were gatherers of plants. We ate some and used the stems and leaves of others to make our baskets. We covered our baskets with pitch so they would hold water. Hot stones made the water boil and cooked our food. Everything we needed 
through in the forest, even our building materials, the trunks of young trees were the framework of our houses. Of course, we don't live in houses like that nowadays. Here's where we live. In the old days, a mother and father, children and grandparents would all live together. Nowadays, we live in separate houses next door to each other. But we still spend a lot of time together. Our old people are respected. They've lived a long time and they know a lot. And our children, they have a lot of fun, just like all children everywhere. They are not often punished and we show them our love. We show our love in other ways. We try to live according to the principles by which the world works. Nature is our friend. When we are moving with nature, we are happy and well. We are a part of the earth, part of the great mystery. In the old days, when we took something from the land, an animal or a plant for food, we prayed to it. We explained why we needed it, that we were not trying to harm it. This was our way of life, and it still is. My people believe that we have no special rights to the world, that we must share it with all living things. The world has not really changed, and in many important ways we have not changed either. The Shoshone Paiute live in the far west, over 1,000 miles northeast, on the edge of these fertile woodlands. There once lived another group of Indians, the Northern Cheyenne. Now many Cheyenne live on reservations like this one, in Lame Deer, Montana, where some older people remember days gone by. We moved across the country at various times in our history. We were farmers at one time. Then we began to follow the buffalo herds. Our lives came to depend in every way on the big animal. Its meat was our food. Its skin was our clothing and covering for our homes. Its bones were our needles. The buffalo became sacred to us. Many of our stories and legends are about it. In one story, a group of Cheyenne hunters were far from home. They were very hungry, nearly starving. They decided to hunt in different directions to see if they could find a big animal for food. When he was by himself, one of the men saw a buffalo. He rode fast, he chased the animal. He thrust his spear and the animal fell. The man rode back to his companions to tell him about the kill. They held their hands in prayer to thank Maya for sending them food. But when they came to the place where the buffalo had fallen, it was gone. This was a terrible thing to happen. It meant that the Cheyenne people might starve to death. When our people were hunters, we had a very special way of life. We lived in teepees, tents that could be rolled up and trailed behind our horses to new hunting grounds. Even before this, we had dogs to carry our burdens. Our women were gardeners. They made clothing from buffalo hide. The child was as close to his brother's sisters to his own mother. He even called them mother. In the old days, a man had such great respect for his wife's mother that he never spoke to her. To this day, that is still our custom. That was long ago when the buffalo were here. When the buffalo were destroyed by professional hunters who worked for the railroads, we tried to make a living in many different ways. The 
United States government tried to turn us into cattlemen, and some of them still raise cattle. Over the years, we have been builders and haulers of freight. Recently, a few of us have begun to search for mineral resources. They are looking for oil and natural gas on our land. Maybe these natural resources will help us to survive in coming generations. Maybe our identity as a Cheyenne people will depend on our cultural heritage. We still believe in the power of Mahael, and today we are known as the Cheyenne. We know that these covenants still have power and can bring healing and strength in times of need. For generations to come, the sacred ways will continue to bind us together as a people. It can bind us together as a people. Every Native American is very conscious of his or her special ties with the tribe and its history. Even in the East, the first part of our country to be visited by strangers from Europe. Many of the Indian nations who welcomed the pilgrims and early explorers to this land still exist. Among them are the Iroquois near Lake Erie. This Iroquois woman can tell you about her people and her life. Six Indian tribes make up the group of tribes known as the Iroquois. I am a member of the Seneca Iroquois tribe. Our reservations are in New York State, close to the city of Buffalo. I'm a finance officer in a large office. My husband Lester is an iron worker. Many of the structural iron workers in the United States are Iroquois. Hardly a skyscraper goes up in the northeastern United States without Iroquois Indian help. As they work on the high steel, maybe they remember the old stories of our people. Stories about the ruler of Earth, Hawaniyo, who lives on a great island in the sky. And stories of the Indian brothers who danced higher and higher until they became distant stars in the evening sky. On the job, Seneca ironworkers are close to the sky. And here on the reservation, a few of their families still live in log houses. Your people taught us to build them. In the old days, hundreds of years ago, we built long houses of young trees with bark and brush woven between them. Several generations of a family lived together in a single longhouse. Now our families live in separate houses. Today, stores provide most of our food. But in the old days, everything we needed came from the woods. We were gatherers, gardeners, hunters. In those days, the Ketaragas Creek was clean, pure, and full of fish. For maple trees, we took sap, which we made into syrup and sugar. From birch trees came the covering for our boats. From the forest came fruits and vegetables, milkweed, burdocks, acorns. We cultivated some crops too, corn, beans, and squash. Our women tended the fields while the men hunted. But one of our greatest skills developed after your people were already here was our skill at government. Several hundred years ago, our separate tribes became an organized group of nations, the Iroquois Confederacy. The leaders of this strong democratic government represented our people. Over the years, they opened their arms to all the Iroquois nations in our region, offering strength and unity. My people, the Seneca, were on the western border of the Confederacy. The men, who were our leaders, sat on a council which made decisions that ruled all of us. But it was the women 
who nominated these men for the council. Only women could make those nominations. Today we are citizens of the Seneca Nation, where men and women have the same rights. Like women all over the country, we Seneca women work in stores, offices, and factories. Here on the reservation, we still govern ourselves by the laws of the Seneca Nation of Indians. The Iroquois are people of the eastern woodlands. The northern Cheyenne live on the Great Plains. And the Shoshone Paiute inhabit the California mountains. As you come to understand them and other tribes, you come to appreciate how different our people are from each other. How each tribe adapted to its land, developed its own special way of life, and survived up to the present day. You see for yourself that we were here for thousands of years before your people came. Even today, we have our own tribes and our own nations. We are Native Americans.